All right, hell yes. Yeah. So we have physics, and we have this basketball problem yet again. Uh, I ain't gonna solve it fast, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve it with uh, just variables to get to the to the end. And in the end, what we're gonna learn is like, hey, we're gonna have something that looks like this, a constant plus, you know what I mean? We're gonna say like a um, a x squared plus b x, you know what I mean? So this is a function of x squared, but you're like, how the hell do I use the Pythagorean theorem? And uh, if this is all you're going to take from the video, well, um, on all these terms, you can just multiply everything by x squared. You know what I mean? So then this just becomes uh, cx squared plus a plus uh, bx. You know what I mean? Uh, I apologize. It should be equal. And then, and then you can separate terms. So then we can go, we can get um, cx squared minus bx minus a, if this is the form that we, we, we started in, and then get everything equal to zero. And then we can use the quadratic uh, equation. All right, but the, the, there's two other aspects of this video that I want to go over. One is just like, well, don't we want the right answer? You know what I mean? So any physics problem, even from the first chapter, you should be able to guess with an order of magnitude of at least 10. So we have a basketball player, shoots a basketball, you know, just past th three point line. That's the general gist. So how long does that take? And in my video, you know what I mean? Well, well let, let's just pretend. I think the easiest thing to do is just visualize you taking a shot from the three pointer. Okay, here we go. Took the shot. All right, hell yeah, it did not go in. Um, so how long was that? You know what I mean? No more than two seconds. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna guess two seconds. You know what I mean? And uh, from the video that I did, it, it takes, uh, it takes about one and a half seconds. Um, the fastest you could do it would be right around one second. But I mean, just two seconds. And what, what the hell does this mean now? Like, how far did I have to get in two seconds? I had to go, I had to go ten meters. You know what I mean? So even just right here, put the put the units out there in space. So we have seconds and we have meters. What what the hell am I trying to find? The velocity. Now this is just going to be the velocity this way, but but hell yeah, we're, we're velocity that way. And what's the units on velocity? It's meters per second. So what do I do to these two to get meters per second? Well, I, oh, I take that meters and then divide by second. You know what I mean? So now I can go back in and and what did I say the meters was? It's ten meters. Cool. So I really like to use units as the equation, so, so then you don't get messed up. Just the other day, I got messed up on a, an equation because uh, uh, I did this. I said strength um, was uh, strength was equal to um, I, I don't even know. It, it was force divided by area, and I messed that up. So I must have said strength is equal to area divided by force and then did something weird like uh, strength times force is area. But if I did a check on reality, those units don't match up there. Okay, so we're going to have 10 divided by 2. 10 meters divided by 2 seconds. All right, so hell yeah, we, we got 5 meters per second. And now just a quick check on reality. Let's say that shot did take one second. Well, I'm going 10 meters in one second. Well, that's 10 meters per second. So now we have our velocity somewhere between, you know, let's say 5 meters per second and up up to 10 meters per second. You know what I mean? So that, there you go. And I would always make these in miles per hour. Kind of just multiply by two. So we have somewhere between 10 to 20 miles per hour for that for that initial velocity. But that's just in this direction. You know what I mean? Now, is that good enough then? I mean, if, if the initial velocity is in this direction, not really, because we would just have to throw this direction. You know, if we throw at a 45, now we have to know at least, if we threw at a 45 degree angle, problem says 40, we at least need to know something about triangles. You know what I mean? And, and so the, the most basic is the 45, and it says that, hey, th these are 0 0.707. It's a good one to remember. Sine and cosine, if here's my angle, sun is shining, this is, this is sine 45, and this is cosine 45. They're the same, but the, the take-home point is they're 70, they're, they're basically 70%, 70 percent. 70 percent of what? They're 70 percent of this hypotenuse, the larger number. And, and in vector, that, that's, that's the original number. So we have something like, hey, I'm going to shoot a basketball at initial velocity. And this component is only 70 percent uh, of the actual velocity I, I shot it with. So if I'm saying it's uh it's it's 10 to 20 miles per hour and i shouldn't mix units you know what i mean so we're going to go five meters per second so let, let's stick with our guess 
five meters per second. If this is five meters per second, what was the initial shot? I'm just gonna guess seven meters per second. And was I right there? Because seven times 0.7, is pretty close to five. So even just right there, using guessing skills, I'm going to assume that the, uh, um, the on the low end is going to be. And then let's do the other one. You know what I mean? So if I say this is 10 meters per second, because um, I, I could shoot it in one second, well, how much is this? Uh, I'm just going to guess 13. Now is that right? 13 times 0.7. No, that's not right. How about 14? 14 times 0.7? Cool, I'm, I'm, I'm right, right about in there. So what I'm saying is 14, 70% of that times 0.7 is going to be this 10. Now the other way to do it is take this 10 and then divide it by 0.707. That'll give you an exact answer. 10 divided by 0.707. Uh, and it's just really good to get used to those fractions. You know what I mean? So, uh, okay, hell yeah. So n now we have a check on reality. Our answer, when it says uh, what, what, uh, what initial speed, that's what they want to know, the initial velocity. Well, we better get an answer between 7 meters per second and 14. 14 meters per second. I I'm pretty sure, like I'm 100% I'm bet my life confident that I can't be... Because three three point line, I looked it up, is seven point like two four meters if I'm right. But uh, you know what I mean. You can't. There's no way you're going to get to the basket with a normal lob shot in under one second. And two seconds, well, it just seems like a, a long time. So anyway, so that's the most important thing about physics problems. If you do know something about it, but even in that guessing process, you you actually have to have a pretty decent understanding of what's going on. Um, but, but it does help hone your skills if you can come up with that initial guess. And even if it's just horrid, you know what I mean? So our first guess was really simple. It's like, hey, I'm just imagining a basketball being shot. Okay, it went in, and that's how I got that two seconds, 10 meters. All right, so now, now we're going to set it up uh, legit. -y. And so the, we're going to use that the acceleration, you know, we got gravity. Uh, we got negative 9.8 is... Uh, uh, now, I hate negative signs because I just put this arrow downward and then said negative 9.8. You know what I mean? I, I need to get better at that. You know what I mean? Is, is acceleration a vector? Like everything's a vector. So if I say it's uh, in the, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, hey, uh, this is the y positive direction. So I'm just going to say acceleration in the y is negative 9.8. Cool. But for the life of me, I, I don't know how to make that a, a vector. I mean, do I? You know what I mean? So in, in vector form, acceleration, w w yeah, so if acceleration was a vector, you know what I mean, uh, like on this page, and I and I had my coordinates, well, it's going to be negative 9.8 j hat. Now that makes sense. And then plus zero, uh, uh, zero i hat plus zero k hat. It, it, I, the i would be in front, but those are zero. So yeah, so there you go. Acceleration is negative 9.8 j hat, and then we're just squared away. Um, but again, I, I don't know how to, uh, the second, the, you know what I mean, like a free body diagram where you actually say, oh, the force is that direction. Well, that, that might be the negative y direction, but you're just assuming the force A is in the negative y direction. So I, I don't know. I, I swear to God, like uh, a negative sign is just going to kill my whole understanding of the universe. So anyway, so we have this, and then the equation that we need is a, a differential equation. You know what I mean? We say acceleration, by definition, is, is change in velocity, change in time. Now, I would write this equation out, and then I would write change in V, change in T, and then I would write dV dt. It just spells it out for you. Because some, like me, I, I never liked using these dV dt. It just seemed too complex. But here we go, dV dt is equal to negative 9.8. See what we did there? And now I can double down on this is a, a function of time to the zero. It's a function of position to the zero. It's a function of velocity to the zero. So like, hey, when the velocity is, uh, you know, five meters per second in the y direction, what's acceleration? You know what I mean? When we throw in five meters per second to the zero power, <clears throat> this just becomes one. And, and, it, and, it, and it basically says, well, acceleration doesn't change. <clears throat> so that, that's the name of the game. And this is very helpful when you kind of set up, um, you know, a little integrals, because what, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, taking, we're taking a differential equation and be like, whoa, okay. I have a differential equation that says change in velocity is change in time. 
Well, we, we, and maybe, maybe this is just new to me, just spelling it out in words that, well, you obviously separate variables and now I can integrate and then I'll get it. All right, bummer. I only have 10 minutes on this camera and, uh, I didn't set my timer, but you know what I mean? All, all we did was get from here to here. So hell yeah, we're going to separate variables. And, uh, and then I said, well, this is a, this is, and if you do that, you integrate to get, uh, you know, dV becomes V and that's, that's an equation for velocity. And, and then I had to put subscripts on this. I mean, we're dealing with the velocity in the Y cause we're dealing with acceleration of the Y. That's what we're worried about first. So then I came over here and it's just like, yeah, well, simultaneously we can do the acceleration in the X. There is no acceleration in the X cause there is no, like, there's no earth sideways. You know what I mean? There's no earth to the right side of that basket, you know what I mean? Um, so th there you go. Uh, and then so we have acceleration is zero, same thing. dvx dt is equal to zero, and we can separate variables. Well, guess what? Acceleration in the x is still a, a function of t to the zero, still a function of x to the zero, v to the zero, you know what I mean? At, at, at any position, the acceleration is still gonna be zero. It don't matter what position you are, it doesn't matter what the velocities are of that basketball, the acceleration in the in the x-axis will always be zero okay so uh you know uh and then in t to the zero so then when we separate variables heck yeah we integrate and we'll do this one first um but then i said okay so now we're going to get an equation that's going to say hey we're going to get an equation of v v y uh, as a function of time and then it's just like you know I mean sometimes that gets confusing when you're just like well Why'd you do that? Why'd you do parentheses? But for you know now I'm understanding that's very useful because like if I just have an equation y is equal to mx plus b I think we all agree hell yeah That's a good good way to write it But then you could also write it y as a function of x is equal to mx plus b You know what I mean it's like why'd you do that now? You're just kind of confusing us, but not really because at the end of the day, like we want to come up, it asks us what the initial speed is. And we're going to throw in all these different variables. Well, instead of throwing numbers on them, you know what I mean? We want an equation that's like, hey, I want an equation for this initial velocity um, making the shot with all those parameters. And we have an angle here, theta. And so I want that function of that initial velocity, uh, or the initial velocity to be a function of theta. You know what I mean? This height initial, this height final, uh, this distance x. And then I was just showing you that like, well, hey, all those parameters are, are like, uh, this, is, this is y initial, y final, x is x final. You know what I mean? And I guess it could also be a position of x initial because we have to maybe set our origin somewhere. You know what I mean? Either right here or, or we could set our origin maybe right there. Okay, so so th th that's just what we're we're showing. This is a function of time because we're also just uh, taking the derivative as a function of time. All right, so when we take negative nine point eight t to the zero uh, dt and integrate that, uh, I don't know what that symbol is, uh, but uh, so that then we get negative nine point eight. And the rules for integration, you know, what I mean, if you're if you're messing up like I was this week. Well, always do this, t to the 0 plus 1 divided by 0 plus 1. You can never go wrong. And now it's uh, plus a constant. So we're going to have vy of t as a function of time is going to be negative 9.8. This is t to the 1. And this is divide by 1. We're good there. But plus a constant. What the constant means is like, hey, you don't have to throw t is equal to 0. You know what I mean? But that, that's going to probably be your most obvious. We know something at the beginning right here. <clears throat> so we're going to say, hey, when t is equal to zero, uh, we know that the initial velocity up, you know, I mean, this is the velocity initial. We actually don't know it, but we do know that it has two components, one horizontal, one vertical. And if here's the angle, the sun is shining on the sine. So this is going to be that, that larger number, the hypotenuse times sine uh, theta. Sine theta is always a number between zero and one. It's a fraction you know, so yeah, uh, this bigger number times a fraction is going to be, heck yeah, this, these, these components, the components of a right triangle, these are always going to be smaller uh, than, than the hypotenuse. Cool. And this one's going to be the initial cosine theta. All right. So, uh, so when time is zero, velocity in the Y is the initial sine theta. And we can go over here now because we want to find, uh, we in, integrate dvx, we get an equation for velocity of x as a function of t. 
And now we can do the same thing. Don't forget about the zero though, that don't go away. So we got zero, t to the zero plus one divided by zero plus one. I love doing basic differentiation and integration with like what should be seemingly simple, but it's the seemingly simple that I think is complex because you wouldn't have this t to the zero. So what's the integration of zero? Well, I mean, you just have, like, just by rule, you would have to say that's a constant. But if not by rule, you can set this t to the zero, do your whole little game here, and then pop out a constant. So now we're going to, this is going to be t to the one, but we're multiplying by zero. That don't go away. So that term zero, and we're just left with the constant. Now you can do the same thing. Hey, this is still t to the t to the one times zero. So we can be like, hey, at times zero, um, you know, then it's just zero to the zero to the one power. That's obviously zero now. Uh, what's our velocity in the x? Well, that's just going to be velocity in the x is a function of t. Well, I mean, th this c value, when we, when we do that, is just v initial cosine theta. And, you know, if, if we have a, a function of <clears throat> velocity as a function of time, and there is no time component, you know what I mean? Um, uh because that, 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 that value went away. I mean, you could also say this is t to the zero. You could do that same game. Now, I, I don't know how official doing this is. I think it is. I just, I just can't, can't prove that, uh, um, that you, I mean, basically what we're saying is that we have, uh, when, when, we, when we integrate, well, let's do this one again. When we integrate dvx is equal to the integration of zero, t to the zero, dt we get vx as a function of time is equal to zero, t to the zero plus one divided by zero plus one plus a constant to the t to the zero. So if you, and I think I've actually may have seen this. I, I don't know, maybe I'm, uh, I haven't, but I mean, obviously you can. This is a function of time and this, this, would, this would apply. This is a constant t to the zero. t to the zero is just one, but then it helps the next time you integrate. So now if we say velocity, um, velo uh, 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 if we say, uh, what, what's velo equation for velocity is change. And let's do that again, because we need another equation. So what is the equation for velocity? Well, it's change in position. Uh, change in time. Cool, and you can do change in x, change in t, and then do dx dt just to get used to that. So now, right here, if we have a, a function for velocity, we can just say, hey, this is dx dt is equal to um, just our constant, which is v initial cosine uh, theta to the t to the zero. And then we can separate variables t to, and then integrate and then same thing, we get a function of x as a function of time is equal to v initial cosine theta t to the zero plus one divided by zero plus one plus a constant. And in this case, when we throw in t is equal to zero, well now we have to set our, our, our initial x. I mean, if we set the origin right, we could set the origin as the basketball. You should do that on some of your problems just so you get used to doing that and still coming up with the right answer. But we're gonna, where the hell should we set our origin? I'm just gonna set the origin where it's most likely, probably where you're shooting, zero, zero. So right at your feet, that's gonna be our origin. So when time is equal to zero, that's where you're shooting and you're gonna be right there. So C is zero for that case. All right, hell yeah. So now we have an equation um, for, for position as a function of time. And then we have an equation for velocity as a function of time. And then we have in the y direction, we have equation for velocity as a function of time. And we do the same thing for position. You know what I mean? We, we can say dy dt is equal to negative 9.8 t to the 1 plus v initial sine theta. Separate variables and integrate. And we get equation for y as a function of t. And this, this becomes negative 9.8 t to the 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 plus v initial sine theta t plus a constant t to the 0, if you really wanted to get into that. And then when, when time is equal to 0, um, uh, then, well, uh, yeah, may, maybe you can't do that right now. You know what I mean? So, 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 so you know, I, yeah. That's what I said, huge red flags if I'm just trying to come up with things that make it seem like it makes more sense. But uh, no, I, obviously, if, if this was t to the zero, uh, no, 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 it still applies. Holy Toledo, that, that's, that's, why, that's why mathematical axioms are so fascinating. 
because hell yeah, if we throw in t, if we throw in zero to the zero power, uh, well technically that should be one. I, I don't know what the calculator is going to say. Nah, but I mean the calculator ain't going to like that zero to the zero power. So so yeah, maybe you can't do this axiom. But when you throw in t is equal to zero, you're going to uh, be right. All right, so when t is equal to zero, our uh, position in the y is going to be, um, well, well, what are we talking about? We're talking about the basketball, right? Yeah, so in this case, our position of the basketball is going to be two meters. You know what I mean? So when we throw in t is equal to zero, this side of the equation has to be two meters. So that means that uh, our c is two. You know what I mean? See how that works out? So then when we throw, when we say c is equal to two meters here, we get an equation y of t is equal to negative 4.9, because we have a divide by two, uh, t squared plus v initial sine theta t plus two. So now when we throw in, this is a function of the, the, of the y at any given time. So if we throw in uh, zero here, hey, we, we get we get two, you know, we get two meters. And right now, we, we could throw in, we could throw in um, our, uh, like right now, we could throw in our guess. Like even right now, we have an equation that says, hey, if we throw in two seconds, like what's our, what's our y going to be? Let's try that out. Negative 4.9, 2 squared, whoops, um, times 2 squared, uh, plus, uh, well, we, we still don't know our initial velocity, you know what I mean? Uh, but we're, we're just going to guess it. So, uh, what, you know, and then here's the other guessing strategy. You know, sh shouldn't we just guess between 7 and 14? So we're going to go 7 plus 14 divided by 2. So we're going to guess 10.5. I bet you that's fairly close. So now we're going to throw it in here and just see what our y value is. Negative 4.9 uh, times 2 squared plus uh, we're going to 10.5 sine of 40 and then multiplied by 2. That's our time in seconds. And then we're just going to add 2. Okay, so from this equation, we, we would be below the horizontal by negative 1.95 seconds. You know what I mean? So e even in this scenario, uh, our t ain't 2. You know what I mean? So if we go back and then switch it to, well, I'm, I'm just going to actually switch it to x. So, and that's our equation. It's basically our equation, and, and I'm just going to enter, but I'm going to do 1 point. So I'm going to do 2 stored as x and bring that equation up. Okay, hell yeah. And then I'm going to go 1.5 stored as x, bring that uh, bring that equation up. And now, now we're at 2.7. So if we shoot for 1.5 seconds, we're, we're going to be lower than the basketball. You know what I mean? So 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 uh, so there you go. And th that, that's a pretty good guess. So our second guess is like, hey, that's pretty close. And if we did go for 1.5 seconds, um, and that's going to be our, our, our vector here, and uh, and now we can say 40 degrees is close to 45. So you know what I mean. Well, let's let's just guess that that real that real guess. So we're gonna say, hey, let's just guess a time of 1.5 seconds. And now we're going to uh, say uh, our velocity. Um, and then we're, we're gonna guess our velocity initial is that 10.5. That's what we're using meters per second. So even just right now, we can figure out our distance. That's going to be 10.5 cosine of 40, and I need to be in degrees. Um, booyah! So we went eight meter. We didn't. We didn't get far enough that way, and we were too low that way. You know what I mean? So, so uh, th this velocity um, needs to be a little bit different. Uh, our time, like, but we don't. We don't know which. Maybe our time, because this. Uh, uh, maybe our time needs to increase and our velocity stays the same. Because if we did 10.5 divided by, um, uh, if we have if we have 10 meters, you know, if we have meters and then a velocity of meters per second, so we have 10.5 meters per second and a distance of 10. Well, what's our time thing right here? Well, what would we do to get time? Well, time needs to be up top, so we would do uh, meters divided by meters per second and, and then meters cancel our times pop up so we would do our distance of 10 divided by uh, 10.5 now i would do the units is the equation method because like you don't want to mess up something simple like that so maybe our time is 0.95 but anyway so now 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 that we have that 
All right, so uh, let's, with the remaining space right here, before we flip to a new page, let's see if we can actually solve this for real. I mean, you, you have to use continuity equations that say uh, when, when, when you're, you're basically like, hey, right when it hits the basket, that's going to be the time, uh, let's say just time final, you know what I mean? But that, that, that time is going to be the same for our uh, position equation in the X and our position equation in the Y. And so, uh, and then our position at that location when it hits the basket is going to be 10 meters in the x. So we have this equation right here. That's going to be 10 meters is equal to velocity initial cosine theta t. And then uh, at this, our, this equation becomes 3.05 meters is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus v initial sine theta t plus 2. Cool, and so this t in both the equations, I'm going to say uh, t is equal to t final. I'm not going to write the, the subscript f, but uh, you know we have t's right there and t right there. We do know theta. Theta is 40, 40 degrees. You know what I mean? So we're done with our guess of 45. We're going to stick with that theta is equal to 40. And so now we have uh, two equations, and then uh, and then. Uh, um, uh, let's see, how many unknowns? I think we just have, um, well, we, we don't know time, and we don't know velocity. So yeah, we have two equations, two unknowns. But this equation, uh, so, so, so what we do is like, hey, let's get this equation as a function of time. So, you know what I mean? So time in this equation is 10 meters divided by velocity initial cosine 40. Cool, and then, then we're going to throw that into this equation. And right, right then, that can give us our answer. You know, I mean, this is our only uh, initial value, and I'm going to show you the calculator method where you can just instantly input it, and then you can be done. You know what I mean? So we're going to go, we're going to go, uh, and but I do need a function as a function of zero. You know, y, you know, on this side's got to be zero. So I'm going to go zero is equal to all I got to do. This is the equal sign here. Just move the 3.5 over there. So we got negative 3.05. And then we got minus 4.9. We have a t squared here, so all this crap just becomes squared. We got 10 meters divided by v initial cosine 40. But then we square it plus uh, this becomes v initial sine 40. And then we have another t there, so that's 10 meters divided by v initial cosine 40 uh, plus 2. I'm sorry I write so small, but I think you can hear what I'm saying. So we got negative 3.05. And then we just type it in and then and then solve it, you know. So negative four point nine. This is the best method just because there's so little room for mistakes. Uh, right here, I could do a mistake. So our v initial is our x, but now I have to divide by cosine forty. I'm trying to use as, as least amount of parentheses, so I'm not going to do this and then put this in parentheses. I'm just going to in my calculator ten divided by x divided by cosine forty, and that that does it correctly. Okay, but parentheses on this, and then we're going to go squared plus, and then this, this is my x term in my calculator. This is my x term. This is my y term. And so we have uh, x sine 40, and then uh, another t. So we're going to do uh, 10 divided by x divided by cosine 40. Okay, hell yeah. And then plus 2, and uh, we're going to graph it. Now, what, what is this going to kick out? It's going to kick out our initial velocity. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, when, when it crosses the zero. And our initial velocity is right around 10. So all we got to do, I mean, this is the, if you just want the answer, just go negative 1 to 1 and, and then get close to your answer. So we're going to go, uh, you know, we're going to go x min 0 to 15 and graph it. And then there should be a line hopefully close to the 10, 10, 10 mark, you know what I mean, if, if we did it right. Hell yeah, we did it right. And, uh, you know, I mean, don't get your hopes up, you know, but we're going to go uh, value of 10, and, and, and there we go. So now we can go 0. I'm going to left bound, right bound, just capture that 0. And uh, booyah. So we have a velocity of initial of 10.66514. You know what I mean? And in the back of the book, this problem is not in the back of the book, but we would go 10 point just three, just three units. So 10.7 meters per second. Because yeah, you could be like, yeah, it's going, uh, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't need to get more specific than that. Now, uh, a commenter on this problem is like, hey, is it is it like 10.0089 or something? 
And I was just like, I don't even know because I didn't even really solve the problem. I, I just, th this is my MO, is like no one's going to explain what the hell is going on in the process of solving the problems. Uh, so that's what we do. But for this one, I wanted to come back and actually solve it. Now, is, is everything kind of correlating w with our guess? So even with this value, so now it's stored as x, we can go back in to my time equation and actually find what the time was. It is going to be divided by x divided by cosine 40. Now I'm going to store that as alpha t. So for our problem, our time for this shot was 1.22 seconds. So everything seems about right. And it came from the process of guessing 5 meters per second or, you know, anywhere between, you know, 5 to 10 for our, for our, this velocity. But then we need, with the angle of 45, we're going to be 7 to 14. So we're going to be right in there. And, and dang, that was a really good, you know, just using those guessing strategies. You don't have to get too crazy. You know what I mean? Honestly, sometimes for some problems, you just want to be a factor of 10. You don't want to say 100 meters per second. And you don't want to say 0 meters per second. Um, all right. So now, now what we can do is uh, we're going to do that same process, but with just, just letters. You know what I mean? And then, and then we'll have an equation as a function. And we could probably have an equation as a function of gravity, too. So it's right here, I'm going to say, hey, ay is going to be uh, g, uh, gravity. And then I'm going to say over here, gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Cool. So now I have an equation for ay. We're going to do ax is equal to zero. So now when I, you can just imagine, well, let's do it. So you got dvy dt, separate variables. And now we have equation for velocity. y is a function of t is just going to be... Uh, uh, g t plus a constant velocity is going to be v initial um, sine theta this one will just be uh, v x of t will just be that constant and we'll have constant velocity in the x v initial cosine theta and then once we do this we're going to say this is equal to dy dt this is equal to dx dt separate variables we get an equation for a function of y as a function of t and we get g divided by 2. Now, don't flip about about the negative sign. It's already over there. Once we throw in g, we get that negative sign. Okay, g, uh, g divided by 2, t squared, plus v initial sine theta t. In this position, x as a function of t will be v initial cosine theta t. Okay, so now, now we have... Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Apologize. Because we also have this uh, height initial. So I'm, I'm going to say, uh, and let's do that. We want that equation. Because when we throw in, we have a constant. We forgot to do the constant. When we throw in t here, what's our height? And we're going to say, hey, that's the origin. Zero, z oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, uh, my bad. I don't, I don't even think I did the problem right. Um, this one, you know what I mean? So huge error. Uh, we have 3.5 here. Uh, where, where, did we set our origin at our feet? As long as we set our origin at our feet, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my, you know, th that works. Yeah, that works. Uh, whatever my words were right here was the mistake. We have to set the origin somewhere. We're going to set it at the feet, and when we do that, then our uh, initial height, uh, uh, when we throw in t is equal to zero, the ball is already at h h initial. So we got height initial. All right, hell yeah. And then position in the x is just zero. Okay, so th those are our two equations, um, x and t. And then when the ball actually hits the basket, well, uh, this is going to be x final. So 10 is x final. And so then we have, uh, then we have uh, an equation that says um, x final is equal to v initial cosine theta. And... Uh, you know what I mean? Well, let's do the T final. It's probably too many, but yeah, this is going to be the time when it hits. And I just want to re-emphasize that's going to be the same time as here because, uh, you know, this is, this is a function of Y at any time. So when we say, when we throw in time final here, and that's going to be that point, what, what the hell is our height? It's 3.05. So we're going to go 3.05. Uh, well, um... 
All right, my bad. Uh, because we don't want to use any numbers. You know what I mean? So we're gonna say, hey, this is this is h final. You know, now now we have a problem that's straight variables. Because now we have a problem that we we can we can make the basket that high. You know, we, we can change this x final to be way the hell out here. You know what I mean? And we don't need x initial because our input is always going to be, our origin is always at our feet. You know what I mean? So x initial is essentially zero. That, that's what we're saying here. So th this equation is still a function of, uh, of uh, um, uh, you know, in, of x initial. But okay, so now, now we're going to have this. So we're going to say h final. Uh, and when, when we're at h final, that's going to be t final. So we got h final is equal to g divided by 2 t final squared plus v initial sine theta t final plus h initial. Okay, so now is it, now we have those two equations. Here's 1, here's 2, and what the hell's are unknowns? We, we just have v initial and we just have time final. We don't know time final. Uh, and, but we do, and we don't know time, uh, v initial. So same thing, we're gonna rearrange this equation as a function of time final. That's just gonna be x final divided by v initial cosine theta. Now we can throw this into this equation. I'm gonna do one step though, because uh, uh, this is t final squared, so let's just square this right now. And this might confuse us later, um, but w if we square this term, um, now, Man, one of the great math teachers that's uh, doing math videos man, is like he, he changed my life when it came to like you know I mean obviously if if this is like a divided by b c and we're squaring it you know that's the same thing as saying a squared divided by b c squared and it's the same thing as saying a squared divided by b squared c squared but stuff like this that'll change your life when it comes to math you know what i mean because it's just like oh i didn't realize that but then then you can get get stuff out of equations into equations you know what i mean i i love this stuff and, and so so that was that was pretty straightforward okay so now we're going to throw these two values t final and t final squared into this equation and once we do we will just have one master equation that will just have velocity initial so let's do that we're going to go h final is equal to g divided by two and then we got x final squared divided by v initial squared cosine squared theta uh, cool, uh, plus v initial sine theta and then we got this t final so we got x final divided by v initial cosine theta plus h initial all right hell yeah so uh uh, now, our only variable, like I said, is v squared. So now we're right back at the beginning of the problem where we have v squared downstairs and v and then v, uh, v, uh, velocity initial downstairs and velocity initial squared downstairs. It seems like a quadratic, but not really. Uh, but th this should just be alarm bells going off, you know what I mean? Like anytime you see this, not easy quadratic. Because then you just, all you got to do is uh, get, 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 both of these upstairs all in one swoop you know what i mean so if this is the larger one you would have to multiply the top by v1 squared v initial squared but if you do oh excuse me but if you do that you got to multiply every term by v initial squared so before we do that let's at least get this equation set to zero and we're going to go h initial minus h final and we're going to say hey this is our constant i'm going to put it in in brackets because now, now we have, hey, look at it. This term is a function of v squared downstairs. This term is a function of v, uh, v downstairs, and this doesn't have a v. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to, hey, we're going to uh, take v initial squared there, v initial squared there, and v initial squared there. And, and theoretically, you could do v initial squared multiplied by zero. This is still zero. So now our equation is zero is equal to uh, these v... So now this becomes the constant, g divided by 2, x final squared divided by cosine squared theta plus... Now we have, uh, well, what cancels? What cancels here? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, was, was this easier than, than I, I thought it was going to be? Ah, oh, damn it. I, I didn't see this v initial. So, so my bad. And this problem just becomes real easy. But had, had this problem... Uh, you know, been, been the one that I thought it was going to be. No, it would have been a little bit harder. And then you would you would get to this step. 
Well, let's ju let's just pretend. I don't I don't know how the hell we're gonna pretend no more. Um. Yeah, all, all I saw was, was this V downstairs. I did not see this. I did not see that one. So theoretically, let's say I did not see that V initial. And then so we, we would have, I know it seems dumb, but we would have uh, X final um, sine theta uh, V initial upstairs divided by cosine theta. At least we get to see, you know, learn a little bit about the math. And then this one would be H initial minus H final v initial squared. So now we have, uh, here's our a term, here's our b term, here's our c term, and then we can use the quadratic. We can solve for v initial is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Um, but, damn it, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. But, but no, we don't have to do that. And so I'm going to get rid of these v squareds. Because, uh, well, maybe we do. No, no, I mean, we, we don't. We, we do and we don't. You know what I mean? But uh, these cancel. So right there, those cancel. Our problem just gets uh, just gets way easier. We don't have to use the quadratic. I guess that, at the end of the day, that's all I'm saying. So let's, let's, uh, let's rewrite this uh, one more time. So we have 0 is equal to g divided by 2 x final squared cosine squared theta plus x final sine theta and then uh, uh, yeah yeah and then just cosine theta um, plus h initial minus h final um, oh whoa, 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 whoa. and we still have the initial square down there so it's so yeah holy hell I kind of apologize for all that um, and uh, so now here's our constant, you know what I mean? So let, let's do that. We don't have, we, we don't need those inner parentheses, but we still have a V squared downstairs. I guess it doesn't matter, but if you still wanted to do that trick, I mean, you could still do it. You could go, hey, I want to do this. I want to go V squared here, V, v initial squared here, and then V initial squared there. So then uh, this becomes your constant, and then this is all a function of, of V squared. I mean, but we, you wouldn't need to do that. That's, that would be dumb to do just because you can just, you could have just moved all this stuff over, you know, uh, you could just moved all this stuff around to solve for V initial squared. Um, but anyway, and, and, and now my problem just looks haggard, but let, let's, let's do that. So th th this becomes zero, those cancel, and we have this. So now to get this by itself, we're going to have to subtract the constant and then divide by that. So let's let's do let's just do this friggin' a all in one swoop. If you can see that, I mean, this is a constant. I'm gonna take it over here and then divide by all this, and that's gonna expose just v squared. I'm gonna take the square root of hella all of that. So we're gonna do negative g divided by two. This is gonna be x final squared divided by cosine squared theta. Um, since I now that I have that, now I'm gonna divide it all by uh, x final, this just becomes tangent theta, sine theta, cosine theta. Um, cool. Uh, plus h initial minus h final. <clears throat> Alright, and, and then, uh, I mean, could we clean that up? I have no idea. I, I don't, you know, at this point, you don't even know if it's right. You know what I mean? That, that, that's the bummer. But I can at least, I can at least get it in one line. See how this is divided by? But I can at least put this jazz just right there. And then the, the 2 down here, too. And then the, it's just negative g x final squared. And it's negative, but g is negative 9.8, so we're still good there. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to have... We're, we'll square we'll square it all in a second, but we have uh, we got negative g x final squared uh, divided by two cosine squared theta times x final tangent theta plus x initial minus x final. But you know how many time how many places and we got to square and take the square root. But how many places could you have made errors in getting this formula? So that's why we totally do the guess and check. And now I gotta see if this equation is right. 
All right, and uh, and again, I apologize for thinking we were going to learn some sort of cool math trick. We did, but we just didn't get to do it all the way. I really wanted to make it hella complex and throw all that crap into uh, the quadratic equation and then just get some crazy equation that you can kind of simplify down, um, but we just have this. So in our calculator, negative 9.8. I'm going to store that as G. Our x final, I'm going to say that's 10, and I'm going to store that as uh, as x. So that's our distance right there. Our theta, I'm going to go 40, stored as alpha theta, and we're in degrees. And uh, our h initial, so we're going to say, hey, th this is 2 meters, and I'm going to store that as alpha h. Now our h final, well, we, we could say that's y, you know what I mean? That kind of might make sense. 3.05 stored as alpha y. Um, because x final is x, y final, this is, now we have x, y, these are the coordinates, 10, 3.05, that's the coordinates, you know, at t final, cool. And, uh, but you can see what we did is, this isn't a function of time anymore. So now we have a velocity equation, and, uh, yeah, 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 so yeah, and that's right, I was right on this parameter, you know what I mean? We want a velocity equation just as a function of the input parameters. I did not want a velocity equation as a function of time. Hell no, you know what I mean? Uh, just on the input. I just want to input these parameters and know something about gravity. And I wanted to figure out if you if you got to that distance. That's the thing. It's like you don't know the initial velocity, but you're saying, hey, we have we have gravity doing this thing. And then we know that if you put any sort of velocity this way, it'll stay that way to Newton's law. And we're trying to hit that point. So our position of that point... You know what I mean? We have to get the position as a function of time, you know, reiterating. And then the, the position, uh, you know, uh, of the function. So the x, this x as a function of time, uh, and the y as a function of time. And the basket hits that spot at 10, 3.05, those, those cartesian coordinates at time final. All right, so if we do all that, um, we're ready to throw this into our calculator. So we got square root of uh, negative alpha g um, x squared divided by 2 divided by cosine x squared and then divided by parentheses x tangent theta oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Th th this should be theta my bad yes our variable is our, yeah, we, we don't have any variable. I mean, we, we, uh, we don't have any unknowns here. These are all knowns when we put them into our calculator. We already put this, our distance x, into our calculator. So, so sorry about that. And uh, tangent theta plus height initial. That's going to be alpha h in my calculator. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, lost the, the square root. Okay, so tangent plus alpha h uh, minus alpha y. Okay, hell yeah, and we get we get our velocity. Velocity initial is ten point six six. You know what I mean? Ten point six seven, and uh, you know. So at this point, you, you I still could have made errors. You know what I mean? Because you can you can set up the problem wrong. You can set up your Cartesianal coordinates where if you do once you integrate, if you do throw time is equal to zero. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe you set up the wrong way. Maybe it's negative two. You know what I mean? But we, we, we said this is positive y, this is positive x. So now, uh, this video is more just like, well, can you solve a problem and be pretty, like 100% confident you did it right? But like I said, it's like, no, I'm 100% confident like I, I, I'm doing it the same way each time. You know what I mean? I'm only 100% confident that it's going to take about 10.5 seconds. And why I'm 100% confident of that is because we have we have data that if you shoot basketball players, I could go to the internet and, that, and that we did that for the other video. You know what I mean? If you're 10 meters out, how long is it going to take? It takes about a second and a half. You know what I mean? It, it, it takes 1.2 seconds uh, um, to do that. And in this problem, it actually takes longer for the NBA players because I thought this problem was ridiculous and, I'm, and, and I might have spotted an error because I got all this data from, from the internet, took clips of videos, and it, it all turned out to be like 90 frames per second in a 60, uh, 60 frame per second uh, video. So all my times were like 1.5, which really made this 45 degrees plus. Like, uh, so Steph Curry, I, I think, shoots 45 to 50 degrees, just, just really just really arcing it in there. And you get more, your, your freedom, your freedom of accuracy 
uh, gets better because your ball is going more vertical. But they do say the taller the shot, it, it's harder to be accurate. It's harder just to throw it up there and expect it to hit the same location. Um, but that, that was my first check. And I would like to do another video on this by actually watching an NBA game and then sitting there with a, a stopwatch. You know what I mean? So I could actually clock the clock and make sure my, my TV's not doing anything weird. But no, what happened is I think YouTube was totally accurate. I took those clips and then threw it into a video editing software, which I think compressed, I, I think it compressed the issue. You know what I mean? Because uh, it actually made a 1.5 second video it, it turned that into like a 1.05. It turned it into like a one second video. And, and the video still looks normal, but it, it is, you can tell, I, I looked and it is a little bit glitchy. Um, so I think I was aired there. And I think it is not, not too common to shoot a 45, 40, 40 degree three pointer, a, a deep, this is a deep three. Uh, you're typically gonna be at least 45, if not typically 50 degree arcing shot is gonna take you a little bit longer. But, but again, take home message, I'm 100% accurate that for this problem, um, that initial guess was the 100% accurate. We took something about the world that we, we, we knew for for sure certain and then made a, a very quality guess. And, and that's, like, that's like something, it's like, could you bet your life that this shot has to be between 5 meters per second and uh, that top end? You know what I mean? Could, could I bet my life that it has to be between 7 and 14, you know, meters per second? Uh, I think, I mean, that, that, that's still a margin of error there. But because of that, I think I'm within the window. So there's, there's a couple types of guessing. One, if you can actually, I mean, this, this was that type of guessing. Guess low, guess high. You know what I mean? Is my low guess for sure low? I, I wouldn't know. You know what I mean? That, that was the thing. I'm just, I'm doing one second for a three. Hey, maybe I'm wrong and it actually it actually sinks it in 0.9 seconds. And then so I would have not captured it. But but uh, just even just doing that, doing a three, oh, it's about two seconds. One second would be fast. Two, and then two might be pretty slow. You know what I mean? So we did a very good job guesstimating uh, this problem. And uh, maybe that's kind of what we learned. And, and let's go back to this equation. So again, we have a velocity equation initial as a function of our input theta our uh, height initial, our height final, and our x final. And like I said, it, uh, yeah, th this one's not an input of our x initial because the only requirements is that you have to set the coordinates at your feet. You know what I mean? I mean, for, for this, yeah. The, the, like the place that I set the coordinates determine how this problem um, line up. Now, if I did set the coordinates here, then I, I just have to say, hey, my h final is only 3 minus, uh, 3.05 minus 2. So this is just 1.05. Now we can do the problem from there and it's the same problem. Um, but, but here is my h final now and then my h initial is 0 and my x, x initial is 0. So then we would, once we did that, we would uh, just have an equation of h final. But anyway, so here's our equation of those of those input parameters, and then here's our equation. Now the other thing that I think is, is good to do is like, is there any limits on this? You know what I mean? Could, could you have your height be a negative? No, you can't. Well, no, you could. I mean, just think about that. Maybe, maybe you have like a, a, an inset basement, and then you're going to shoot at this basement. Maybe they're taking apart the floor, and you're like, you're like 10 feet deep. So you could. You, you could have a negative h initial and this problem would still work so that's cool so same thing with the basket you, you could put the basket at the bottom of a hill and then you could have a, a h final that was negative you know what i mean so so doing those types of things it's cool to get an equation but and then finally is there any limits on this equation uh, i think one is that if the if the if the basket is over here your, your angle has to be between zero and 90 you know what I mean, 90 degrees. And if you're shooting at 90, that's nonsensical. So right now, you, you have uh, zero, you, you, your theta range has to be, um, and zero for this problem, zero is nonsensical. Uh, zero, zero degrees shooting is nonsensical if your, if your height final is bigger than your height initial. So even just right now, you have these scenarios where, 
you can put kind of a mathematical kind of reality on this. You can say, hey, theta uh, is, uh, is not equal to zero if, you know what I mean, h final is greater than h initial. You know what I mean? Uh, if they're the same, it's hard to tell because you could, I mean, your angle can't be equal to zero, but if it's just a slightly above and you're shooting at like the speed of light, you'll reach there. You know what I mean? But 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 in any given given so yeah there there is some limits on this angle being low but you're not going to be able to know that uh, um uh, let's see let's see yeah, yeah but but th this is an obvious one if you shoot at a zero degree angle you know I mean you'll never get to that basket the basket has to be equal to your height and yeah you could just be shooting at the speed of the light and then you'll hit that point but I mean it, your ball your ball won't go in the basket you know I mean obviously a basket has to have some sort of you know kind of downward angle and, and then uh, you know what I mean so uh, th that that would be another interesting part of the problem where you you have to pick the center of mass of the basketball and then the basketball has a front edge and a back edge and depending on the given angle, you want to see the margin of error between like the, the angle, you know what I mean? Between the, the velocities. Could your velocity vary by how much? How much could your velocity, that, so that would be a red star problem. So in this problem, it swooshed, like we were dead center. And uh, if that's the case, you could figure out, um, I mean, it, it, that is an interesting one. I mean, your, your ball's coming in like at an angle like this. Uh, it's still you're still hitting right there dead center but what's the if your ball was coming in at a at an angle like this well at some part this part of the ball is going to hit on, on coming in so if it's coming in at a shallow angle look at that you know that part of the ball is going to hit the rim so that would be a red star star problem to be like well at, at what angle is is the shot like impossible so yeah that that's Oh, that, that would be a perfect red star problem. Like, uh, given this velocity, uh, or um, given, given, uh, yeah, given, I don't know how you'd do it, but uh, like almost given any, any velocity, you know, given any velocity, and uh, is there a limit on how low the angle can be where you can just barely make the shot in any lower of an angle, you're going to clip the rim and there's just physically no way to make the shot because a faster shot might might get up above but then it's going to hit the rim over here and what you're going to say is if the ball hits the rim anywhere there's no probability that it's going to go so you, you do a hundred percent probability that if it if it's if the ball can clear the rim right here and then go through uh, then you're good to go you know what I mean? And you could totally do it physics. It might clear this rim, but it might clip this rim. But maybe a check on reality is it has to clip this rim where the where half the ball is below the horizontal. You know what I mean? And then so those are just like, oh, hell no. Why would anyone want to do that? Because, yeah, even for me, it's like that would be a head scratcher. And uh, and there would be so many places to make small errors. So, uh, but... Uh, but, uh, but I'd be willing to take that on. But there's no reason to take on a problem like that if you can't, um, uh, you know, do a problem like this and be like 100% accurate, you got the right answer. So that's what we kind of learned today is what ways can you set up a problem where, where you, you're going to be very certain that you're leading towards the answer and once you get the answer, you're good to go. And I do a bad job. It says, uh, at what initial speed must the basketball player throw so that it goes through the hoop without striking uh, the backboard. And even that, that's a dumb, you know, maybe that is a red star, but obviously they're, they're just saying that center points there. I don't, I, I, I don't think they're very serious about this statement. Um, because that, that is a, at what initial speed, th th this, is, this is that red problem. Like at what initial, if it said at what initial speeds, uh, must uh, the basketball player throw to go through the hoop, you know, with, maybe without striking the rim, that's that red star problem. All right, hell yeah. Now, now we're just uh, saying words. So thanks for joining me on this one, and guess what? That's a video.